Timmy's agonized screams rang through the Sakari torture chamber as his alien captors carved into his flesh, desperate to extract the secret of humanity's hidden power. In a seedy alien cantina on the lawless world of Zaxos Prime, two Sakari sat hunched over a table, engrossed in hushed conversation. The clamor of a dozen alien tongues and the pulse of unfamiliar music filled the smoky air. Raxa, a battle-scarred Sakari military officer, leaned in close to his companion. Zolok, there's been an incident with the humans, something terrible, unspeakable. Raxa took a long pull from his drink, stealing himself. A faction of Sakari extremists captured a human child, a boy named Timmy. They... he paused, disgust twisting his features. They tortured him, Zolok, an innocent child. By the stars, Zolok breathed. Why? What could drive them to such cruelty? Greed and fear, Raxo spat. The extremists, led by that sadistic bastard Kazar, believe the humans are concealing advanced technology. Weapons, shields, propulsion. They think Earth is hiding some great power. They sought to torture the information out of the boy. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. And did they succeed? Did the child break? Incredible, Zolok murmured. But surely the humans won't let this stand. How did they respond to this atrocity? Raxor leaned back in his chair, his gaze distant. That's the thing, Zolok. The humans, they didn't respond, not at first. It was as if they hadn't even noticed. Zolok frowned. I, I don't understand. Neither did Kazar and his followers. They thought humanity's silence meant weakness, timidity. They believed they could abuse the humans without consequence. Raxa's eyes hardened. They were wrong. Humanity was just biding its time, waiting for the right moment. And when they finally acted... He leaned forward, his voice dropping to a whisper. Let me tell you what happened next, Zolok. Let me tell you how the humans revealed their true power, and why the Sakari will soon learn to fear the wrath of Earth. Because if we don't stop Kazar and his kind... If we don't make amends, humanity will burn our worlds to ash. Zolok leaned forward, his eyes widening with interest. So what happened next? How did the humans save the child? Raxa took another sip of his drink, savoring the moment. Well, the human military didn't waste any time. They sent in their best soldier, Captain Peter Gray, to lead a rescue mission. And let me tell you, Zolok, the technology they used was like nothing we've ever seen before. What do you mean? Zolok asked, his brow furrowed with curiosity. The humans, they have this advanced stealth technology that allowed them to infiltrate Kazar's hidden base on that remote moon without being detected. It was incredible, Zolok. Our scanners didn't pick up a thing. Zolok's eyes narrowed. But how did they even know where to find the base? The galaxy is a big place, Raxa. It's not like they could just stumble upon it by chance. Raxa leaned back in his chair, a grin spreading across his face. Ah, that's the clever part. You see, the humans had been placing these tiny tracking devices in their children's toys. Ever since previous abductions by other races, they were prepared for this, Zolok. They had a way to locate their missing kid the whole time. Tracking devices in toys. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. I never would have thought of that. The humans, they're always one step ahead, aren't they? Raxa nodded. They sure are, and that's not all. Captain Gray and his team, they consisted of only five soldiers. Five Zolok. And yet, they managed to breach the extremists' defences and take out the guards without triggering a single alarm. It was a thing of beauty, the way they moved, the precision of their actions. Raxa leaned forward, his eyes intense. Captain Gray and his team, they moved through the base like ghosts, Zolok. They used their advanced sensors to locate the boy's cell deep in the heart of the facility, and when they found him... Zolok's eyes widened. What did they see? The child, Timmy, he was in rough shape. Beaten, bruised, clearly tortured. But here's the thing, Zolok. Despite everything they'd done to him, the boy remained defiant. He hadn't broken, hadn't told them a damn thing. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. Incredible! Such strength in one so young, but how? How did he resist? Zolok recoiled, horror etched on his face. They would sacrifice a child, their own child, that's, that's monstrous. 
Raxa sighed. Is it? The humans, they think differently than we do, Zolok. They value the security of their entire species above the life of any individual, even a child. They've learned from past mistakes, and they're determined to protect their technological edge, no matter the cost. Zolok sat back, struggling to process this revelation. I, I suppose I can understand their reasoning, even if I don't agree with it. But what happened next? Did Captain Gray manage to free the boy? Raxa's grip tightened on his glass. They were close, Zolok, so close. But just as they were about to release Timmy from his cell, they were confronted by Kazar himself, along with a squad of his most fanatical followers. The humans were outnumbered, outgunned. It looked bad. Zolok leaned forward, his heart pounding. And then? What happened then, Raxa? Raxa took a long, slow sip of his drink, savoring the moment. He looked up, meeting Zolok's gaze. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? The humans, they're full of surprises. Just when you think you have them figured out, they pull something new out of their bag of tricks. And what Captain Gray did next, well, let's just say it's something the Sakari will never forget. Zolok leaned forward, his eyes wide with awe. Just as it seemed all hope was lost, the humans had another trick up their sleeve. Incredible. Raxa nodded, a grin spreading across his face. Indeed, as Captain Gray and his team faced off against Kazar and his extremists, a series of massive explosions suddenly shook the base to its core. The humans, it turned out, had deployed an army of miniature drones throughout the facility during their infiltration. Miniature drones? Zolok asked, his brow furrowed. Yes, tiny machines no larger than insects, each one packed with a powerful explosive charge. They had gone completely undetected by our security systems. The human's technology is truly remarkable. Zolok shook his head in disbelief, and with the base in chaos, Captain Gray and his soldiers were able to turn the tide of the battle. Exactly, Raxa confirmed. They moved with a speed and precision unlike anything I've ever seen. It was almost as if they were blurring in and out of existence, striking down the extremists with ruthless efficiency. Kazar and his followers didn't stand a chance against the humans' superior tactics and advanced weaponry. But how did they develop such incredible technology and training? Zolok inquired. His curiosity piqued. Raxa leaned back in his chair, his expression growing somber. The humans have been preparing for the possibility of an alien invasion for decades, ever since their first encounter with extraterrestrial life. They've poured enormous resources into research and development, creating cutting-edge equipment designed specifically to combat alien threats. Zolok nodded, a newfound respect for humanity dawning on his face. And so, with the base crumbling around them, Captain Gray and his team were able to secure the child and make their escape. Yes, Raxa replied, ah, but that's not all. As they fought their way out of the facility, the human fleet arrived in orbit, ready to extract their soldiers and the rescued boy. It was a sight to behold, Zolok, a testament to humanity's determination and technological prowess. Zolok listened, his eyes wide with shock. Admiral Zaxar was behind this all along, supporting his own son's extremism, just to get his hands on human technology. Raxa nodded gravely. It seems treachery runs deep in the Zaxar bloodline, but the humans, they were prepared for this as well. How did Captain Gray respond to the Admiral's demands? Zolok asked, leaning forward in his seat. With the same unflappable calm he displayed throughout the entire mission, Raxa replied. He informed Admiral Zaxar that the human fleet had already surrounded the Sakari warship using their own advanced cloaking technology. Any hostile action, he warned, would result in the immediate destruction of the Admiral's vessel. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. The humans had outmaneuvered the Admiral's ship without even being detected. Their technology must be truly remarkable. Indeed, Raxa agreed. And with young Timmy's life hanging in the balance, the tension between the two fleets was palpable. One wrong move could have sparked an interstellar incident, or worse. So what happened next? Zolok asked, his voice barely above a whisper. How was the standoff resolved? Raxa took another sip of his drink, savoring the moment. Well, Zolok, that's where things took an unexpected turn. 
You see, Admiral Zaxar had one more trick up his sleeve, a secret weapon that even his son Khazar was unaware of. Zolok's eyes widened. A secret weapon? What was it? Raxa leaned forward, his voice low and conspiratorial. A prototype Sakari stealth fighter, equipped with advanced jamming technology and a payload of devastating quantum torpedoes. The Admiral had kept it hidden, waiting for the right moment to unveil his ace in the hole. Raxor nodded, his expression grim. He did. Without warning, the stealth fighter uncloaked and launched a barrage of torpedoes at the human fleet, catching them off guard. The jamming technology made it difficult for the humans to lock onto the fighter, and for a moment it seemed as though Admiral Zaxar might actually succeed in his treacherous plan. Zolok sat back in his chair, stunned by the revelation. I can't believe it. The Admiral was willing to risk an all-out war with the humans just to satisfy his own greed and ambition? It appears so, Raxa confirmed. But the humans, they had one last surprise in store for the Admiral, something that would turn the tide of the battle and ensure young Timmy's safe return to Earth. Zolok leaned forward once more, his heart pounding in his chest. What was it, Raxa? What did the humans do? Raxor smiled enigmatically, his eyes glinting in the dim light of the cantina. That, my friend, is a story for another time. But suffice it to say, the humans demonstrated a level of ingenuity and resolve that day that would forever change the balance of power in the galaxy. And Admiral Zaxa, well, let's just say he learned the hard way what happens when you underestimate the tenacity of the human spirit. Zolok sat back in his chair, his eyes wide with shock. Admiral Zaxar's ship destroyed? By human nanobots? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Raxa nodded, a grim smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Indeed, the humans had deployed a swarm of microscopic machines, each one no larger than a speck of dust, into the Admiral's ship. These nanobots infiltrated the vessel's systems, replicating and spreading like a virus until they reached the power core. And then, Zolak prompted, leaning forward in his seat. Catastrophic failure, Raxa replied, his voice low and serious. The nanobots caused a chain reaction within the power core, leading to a massive explosion that tore the ship apart from the inside out. There were no survivors. Zolak shook his head in disbelief. I've never heard of such advanced technology, how did the humans develop these nanobots? Raxor took a sip of his drink before continuing. The humans have been experimenting with nanotechnology for years, seeing it as a potential game-changer in both medical and military applications. These particular nanobots were part of a top-secret project known as Grey Goo, named after a theoretical scenario in which self-replicating nanomachines consume all matter on Earth. It is... Raxa agreed. But the humans have learned to harness this technology, using it to their advantage in situations like this. With Admiral Zaxar's ship destroyed and the extremist threat neutralized, the human fleet proceeded to escort Captain Gray, his team, and young Timmy back to Earth. Zolok sat in silence for a moment, processing the incredible events. I can only imagine the impact this incident has had on the galactic community, the humans, They've proven themselves to be a force to be reckoned with. Raxor nodded, his expression serious. Indeed, many alien races are now viewing humanity with a mixture of awe and fear. They've demonstrated a level of technological sophistication that few could have imagined. Zolok leaned forward, his brow furrowed with concern. And what of the boy, Timmy? What happened to him upon his return to Earth? Raxor leaned back in his chair a smile playing at the corners of his mouth. Timmy's return to Earth was nothing short of triumphant. The entire human population hailed him as a hero, a symbol of their species' indomitable spirit. Zolok nodded, his eyes wide with wonder. It's incredible that a child so young could endure such trauma and emerge even stronger. Indeed, Raxor agreed. Timmy's resilience and dedication to his people was truly remarkable. In fact, it was his experience with the Sakari extremists that inspired him to join the human military when he came of age. Zolok's brow furrowed. A child soldier? I thought the humans frowned upon such practices. Raxa shook his head. 
No, no. Timmy waited until he was old enough to enlist of his own free will. His exceptional intelligence and first-hand knowledge of alien technology allowed him to quickly rise through the ranks. In fact, he became one of the youngest generals in human history. How impressive, Zolak murmured. But what role did General Timmy play in shaping humanity's interactions with other alien races? Rax's expression grew serious. General Timmy, now known as the Hero of Earth, was instrumental in establishing humanity's dominance on the galactic stage. Under his leadership, the human military developed even more advanced technologies. Such as, Zolok prompted. KI-driven warships, for one, Raxa replied, and genetically enhanced super-soldiers. The humans were determined to never again be caught off guard by alien threats. Zolok sat back in his chair, his mind reeling with the implications. And what of the Sakari? How did they respond to these developments? Raxa's face darkened. The Sakari, still reeling from their humiliating defeat, attempted to forge alliances with other alien races to counter humanity's growing power. But General Timmy had anticipated this move. He had already begun diplomatic negotiations with key alien factions, Raxa explained. Using a combination of charm, intimidation, and technological trade, he managed to win them over to humanity's side. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. The young general's strategic brilliance is truly astonishing. It seems the future of the galaxy may very well be shaped by human hands. Raxa nodded, his gaze distant. Indeed. With General Timmy at the helm, there's no telling how far humanity's influence may spread. The question is, will they be benevolent leaders or ruthless conquerors? Raxor leaned forward, his voice low and grave. General Timmy's discovery of the Zephyrian's involvement changed everything. It was a revelation that shook the very foundations of the galactic order. Zolok's eyes widened. The Zephyrians, I've never even heard of them. How could they have remained hidden for so long? Advanced cloaking technology, Raxor explained. The Zephyrians had mastered the art of concealment, allowing them to operate in the shadows for millennia. They had been pulling the strings behind the scenes, manipulating lesser races like puppets on a stage. Zolok shook his head in disbelief. And the Sakari extremists were just pawns in their game? Exactly, Raxa confirmed. Kazar and his followers were merely tools, manipulated by the Zephyrians to sow chaos and discord among the galactic community. Their ultimate goal was to weaken the other races, leaving them vulnerable to conquest. Raxa's eyes gleamed with admiration. General Timmy was a mastermind of strategy. He knew that humanity couldn't face the Zephyrians alone. So, he began to forge alliances with other alien races, united by a common cause. A coalition, Zolok mused. That must have been a daunting task, given the historical animosity between some of the races. Indeed, Raxa agreed. But General Timmy was a skilled diplomat. He used a combination of persuasion, shared interests, and the promise of advanced human technology to bring the races together. It was a delicate balancing act, but he managed to create a united front against the Zephyrians. Zolok nodded, impressed by the young general's political acumen. And what was the plan of attack? Raxa's face grew serious. General Timmy knew that the Zephyrian strength lay in their advanced technology and their ability to strike from the shadows, so he devised a plan to turn their own tactics against them. The human-led coalition employed a three-pronged approach, Raxer explained. First, they used their own advanced stealth technology to infiltrate Zephyrian space undetected. Second, they launched a series of cyber attacks, crippling the Zephyrian's communication networks and infrastructure. And third, they carried out precision strikes against key military installations, weakening the Zephyrian's ability to wage war. Zolok's eyes widened. A bold strategy, but surely the Zephyrians didn't take this lying down. Raxa shook his head. No, they didn't. The war that followed was brutal and prolonged, lasting for several years. The Zephyrians fought back with all their might, unleashing advanced weapons and legions of genetically enhanced soldiers. It must have been a terrible conflict, Zolok murmured. 
It was, Raxa confirmed. Both sides suffered heavy casualties. Entire worlds were devastated and countless lives were lost. But through it all, General Timmy remained a beacon of hope and inspiration for the Allied forces. Zolok leaned forward, his eyes intense. So how was the war finally won? How did the conflict ultimately end? Raxo's expression darkened as he leaned forward, his voice low and grave. In a final desperate attempt to turn the tide of the war, the Zephyrians unleashed a weapon of unimaginable horror. The Star Eater. Zolok's eyes widened in disbelief. The Star Eater? What manner of abomination is that? A technological monstrosity, Raxa replied, his voice tinged with revulsion. Designed to consume entire stars, wiping out any planets and civilizations unfortunate enough to be in its path. General Timmy, faced with an existential threat to not only humanity, but the entire galaxy, knew he had to act. Zolok leaned forward, his heart pounding in his chest. What did the general do? Raxa took a deep breath before continuing. In a final act of self-sacrifice, General Timmy personally led a small team of elite soldiers on a suicide mission to destroy the Star Eater from within. Armed with the most advanced human technology, they managed to infiltrate the Zephyrian stronghold and sabotage the device's core. By the stars, Zolok whispered, his voice filled with awe and sorrow. And General Timmy, his team? Raxer shook his head, his eyes downcast. Trapped inside the collapsing structure with no hope of escape, they gave their lives to save us all. Zolok sat back in his chair, stunned by the revelation. And the Star Eater! Consumed by a cataclysmic explosion, Raxa replied, his voice heavy with emotion, along with the nearby star in the Zephyrian homeworld. The war ended that day, but at a terrible cost. Zolok bowed his head in respect his heart heavy with the weight of General Timmy's sacrifice. The galaxy owes him a debt that can never be repaid. Raxa nodded solemnly. Humanity mourned the loss of its greatest hero. In the aftermath of the war, they withdrew from galactic affairs, focusing instead on rebuilding and protecting their own territories. And the Allied races? Zolok asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Grateful for humanity's sacrifices, Raxa replied. They pledged to honor General Timmy's memory and maintain the peace he fought so hard to achieve. Zolok sat in silence for a moment, processing the incredible tale. The galaxy is a safer place thanks to General Timmy and the humans. Raxa leaned forward, his eyes intense. For now, perhaps, but never forget, Zolok, the galaxy is still a dangerous place. New threats always lurk on the horizon. And what of humanity? Zolok asked, his brow furrowed with concern. Will they be ready to face these threats? Raxor sat back in his chair, a distant look in his eyes. The story of General Timmy and the human Zephyrian War serves as a reminder of the heights of bravery and sacrifice that humans are capable of. Their impact on the course of galactic history cannot be overstated. Zolok nodded, a newfound respect for the human race etched upon his face. Indeed, Raxa, indeed. I have a feeling that the galaxy has not seen the last of humanity's greatness. Zolok sat back in his chair, his mind reeling from the tragic end to General Timmy's story. He looked up at Raxa, his eyes filled with a mix of sorrow and disbelief. Is that it, then? he asked, his voice barely above a whisper. Has humanity truly withdrawn from the galactic stage forever? Raxor leaned forward his expression somber. I'm afraid it's not quite that simple, my friend. In the decades since the war, humanity has changed. The trauma of the conflict, the loss of their greatest hero, it's left deep scars on their collective psyche. Zolok frowned. What do you mean? Humanity has become increasingly isolationist and xenophobic, Raxer explained. They've begun to view all alien races with suspicion and hostility, once seen as the saviors of the galaxy, they now see us as potential threats. But why? Zolok asked. After all they've done, all they've sacrificed... Raxa sighed. Fear, Zolok. Fear and anger. Human politicians have been exploiting these emotions, rising to power on platforms of extreme nationalism and militarization. 
they've convinced their people that the only way to ensure their safety is to assert their dominance over the galaxy. Zolok's eyes widened. Dominance through force? Raxor nodded grimly. I'm afraid so. Humanity, now led by a ruthless and expansionist government, has begun to subjugate the once-allied races. We, weakened by the war and unable to match their technological might, have found ourselves at their mercy. This can't be happening, Zolok whispered, his voice trembling. Is there no hope for peace? Raxor leaned back, his eyes heavy with the weight of his knowledge. I wish I could say yes, my friend, but I have recently received intelligence suggesting that humanity is planning a massive military campaign to conquer the remaining free races. Even the Sakari, still bearing the scars of our previous encounter, have begun to prepare for the inevitable conflict. Zolok shook his head, his heart heavy with despair. So the story of General Timmy, once a shining example of heroism and sacrifice, has now become a cautionary tale. Indeed, Raxa said. It serves as a warning about the dangers of unchecked power and the consequences of trauma and fear. Unless humanity can find a way to overcome its past and embrace a more peaceful future, I fear the galaxy may be doomed to an endless cycle of war and suffering. The two aliens sat in silence, the weight of Raxo's words hanging heavy in the air. The bustling cantina seemed to fade away, replaced by a sense of unease and foreboding. The future, once so bright with the promise of human-alien cooperation, now seemed bleak and uncertain. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.